Hey friends, welcome to this video. This video is very personal to me and I'm so glad that I got my US visa after the previous two rejections. This was my third go at getting the US visa and I finally have it. So it's been a journey which was pretty challenging and I'm glad that I finally got it. And now I really want to share this information and kind of help out others who are in the process. Before moving, the topics that I'll be talking about, I'll be putting the timestamps so you can skip on which ones you're interested in, but I would suggest you go on and watch the entire video to get a better idea of how I got my visa and the previous rejections that I'll be sharing about. So yeah, uh, the topics that we will be talking about um, will be in the timestamps. Also before moving ahead, I have two more things to share. One is I really have to thank Shrishti, Love and Ritesh. They really kind of guided me through the process of applying for the visa and kind of getting things right in my forms and also prepping me the right way for the interview which was the most important part, like literally with everything, Shrishti kind of just guided me. She was like the backbone and then Love and Ritesh were helping me with the interviews and like prepping for the interview. I know for some people it might not be a big deal, but I was scared and I was like really wanted to get it like right this time because this was my third go. So first of all, thanks to them. And the second thing that I want to share is now that I finally have my visa, since I've had these two rejections, plus this third time where I finally, you know, researched so much and learned all that there was for the B1B2 visa application. You can schedule one-on-one -on -one visa mock interviews or DS-160 checking sessions. So you can check the video description. There would be a link or you can just email me and get in touch and I'd be glad to help you out. And yeah, let's get that US visa. So before moving ahead, if you're new to the channel, I'm Nashad Khan and make sure you subscribe to the channel for future updates. And if you need any help with the B1B2 visa process, I would be glad to help you. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. Now let's get going with the video. Now, um, starting about uh, the visa process, the visa that I got now is a B1B2 visa. It's valid for 10 years, maximum duration at the time, six months. Um, then you have to get out of the border, get in again, and that's valid for 10 years as many times as you like. I got the B1B2 visa because I applied for clinical observership, which comes under the B1 visa. So now starting with the backstory of my previous rejections. So my first rejection was in 2018. I applied with my family for a tourist visa. It was in Chennai, India. That was the only appointment I was able to get. Um, it was kind of in a bit of a rush. And we just applied using a travel agent that we were suggested. But this travel agent was like not very really helpful for some reason. We didn't find it helpful. I didn't find it helpful. He just asked us to take like a pile of documents and yeah, I think we were not prepped for the interview well. We, we were like, just we just went there, which is like not right. So we were not prepared the first time. So the second time that my visa was rejected was in Barbados in the Caribbean. I was in St. Lucia in 2020 around March or April when I had my second um, application. And I applied in Barbados, which was the island just below my island in the Caribbean. So that was the closest uh, US embassy that I had at the time. So I applied for presenting a research paper at a conference in San Diego. It was an ASBMB conference in 2020. And I had everything that I needed, all the papers, everything, everything. But um, my conference got cancelled on the day of my visa appointment. And I could do nothing about it, but I went for the visa appointment. And yeah, I didn't get the visa. I'll explain in detail about this second rejection in another video. So now coming on to this present appointment or this present third time that I applied for the US visa. So I applied for the third time for the US visa in mid 2022. And the appointments that I got were on 15th and 16th of November in Mumbai. So that was like one and a half year after I had actually started the process. It was a very long time. And because of that time, I had to also renew my DS-160 and take a new one for the biometrics and the application. So now coming on to the um, visa appointments in India, uh, you have two appointments. First is the biometric and the second one is the visa interview at the embassy. So my biometrics were in Mumbai and my interview was in Mumbai as well on the 15th and 16th. So this is how the biometric appointment works. I reached there at 8.50. My appointment was 9.30. They usually let you in 15 minutes before your time. But uh, this day, they just let me in before. All the security checked below is that I had an appointment confirmation and then they gave me a coupon with a token number. Um, so I go in, I walk on the stairs onto the first floor and there's a queue that you get into. The queue goes ahead and once you enter the um, biometric center, um, like straight ahead, there are a few windows. Where is the drop box location? If you already had a visa, you just drop off your passport or any documents. Um, if you are going for a biometric appointment, however, you're in the queue, you follow the queue, you are going to go through a security check with a metal detector, simple, nothing much. Then you enter the first door. After entering the first door, there are like four counters. Um, you go on and join a queue. The, there's a person at the counter, you'll greet them. You'll be asked to have your passport and your appointment confirmation letter. That's all you need here. 
So here is where you give your passport and confirmation letter. They'll just review and check it. And if you have changed your DS-160 recently, like I did, you have to inform that you have changed your DS-160 form and they'll update it on the form right there. This is when you have to do it. So you, you have to make sure that you update your DS-160 at one of these um, four counters. Also, you have to make sure that they have attached a barcode on the back of your passport. So make sure that you have the sticker on the back of your passport and it's safe and secure. So after they do that, they'll uh, take you to another queue, which is for your actual biometric. You get in the queue again. After a few minutes, your turn comes up. You go and walk to a window, which is like a glass window with a person behind. I walk to the window. I greet the person on the other side of the window. I slide in my passport and my appointment confirmation. They asked me my name and my date of birth, which I replied to. And then I was asked to place four fingers of my left hand, four fingers of my right hand, and then the two thumbs on the fingerprint scanner. Then they asked me to get back. There was like a whiteboard and just stand there. They had their DSLR camera, they focus it. And then they asked me to just like position my head the right way, turn and just tilt a bit, whatever. And they'll take a picture and then they'll be like, your biometric is done. Thank you. So once that's done, my biometric was done and I get out and that's all. Okay, so now coming on to the interview day. My interview was in Mumbai as well. It was on the 16th of November, 2023. And the time was 7.50 a.m. I reached the US Embassy of Mumbai around 7.30 a.m. There was a very long queue outside the embassy wall. You have to kind of get in the queue, probably like 100 people standing outside in the queue. Uh, you get in the queue, it takes you probably like 15 or took me like 15, 20 minutes. And once you are about to enter the embassy, just before that, there's a check post where they check your passport and they'll check that it has the DS-160 sticker on the back. Then once you go in through there, you will be again in the queue, same queue. And then before you enter the first gate, there is a counter where you can kind of keep your electronics and valuables, which are not allowed inside. It's payable probably like 400 or 600 Indian rupee. You go in, it's a kind of small room and that's the security check room, uh, just the basic security check. So after the security check, you come out of that room and it's an open area with a lot of chairs, um, like a big area, open area with a shade and a lot of chairs to, for people to wait. And then on the right side of that is the building where you have to go for your appointment. Luckily, the time I was going in, there was like no people waiting in. It was like all empty. You could just walk directly and go in. So I walk um, and there's another like two more heavy, big, heavy bulletproof doors that you have to like push through to go in. Uh, then they'll check that you have your passport and your DS-160 and put you in a long queue. This queue was um, for Windows number 25 to 40, I guess. I don't remember exactly, but 25 to 40 win number windows were on this side of the interview area. So I get in the queue. It's the common queue initially. Everyone's in the same queue, which goes to four windows at the end. And in the end, the four windows, the first windows that you have to go through after like 15 to 20 minutes, they'll ask you for your passport and your DS-160. And all they'll check is your passport matches with you, your, 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 the person who's actually there, they'll check the DS-160. And that's all. That's like pretty simple, a few seconds, I would say. They'll um, give you a heads up, then you take your passport and your DS-160, and then you go on and join the other queue. There's like two queues, one for English interviews and one for other languages. So again, a queue which has like around 15 to 20 people ahead of me in the English queue. And uh, as the queue passes on and, and as I reach the end, the officer there puts me on window number 31. I go and join the queue for window number 31, three people ahead of me, one person giving the interview and two ahead of me. So then they are done with the interview and it's my turn. So that's how you reach the interview thing, my interview. What happened with my interview? So now starting with the interview, the, the most important thing we have been waiting for, right? Uh, the interview goes like this. Um, my visa officer in his 30s, I guess, it was like a nice guy, like looking fresh and was having his coffee. That's what I noticed. So, uh, well, he looks at me and he uh, directions me to just move ahead, come in. So I walk in with confidence and I and I greet him warmly, like, hey, good morning. How's your day? He replies, good, thank you. And I pass on my passports and my DS-160. He takes them, he scans the back and with, for the DS-160 and the passport and looks at the screen where he probably got the DS-160 form. Um, and the first thing that he says is, so when have you traveled to the US before? And of course, I've never traveled to the US before. So I'm like, no, I have not traveled to the US before. That's all I say. Then to that, he says, he probably read UK or I don't know. He says, oh, UK, that's what he said on that. And then he says, then he asks his first question. 
or I would say that would be my first question in a way. So he asks, what is the reason for your travel to the United States? So to the question I replied, I am going to the US for a four week observership. This would be in internal medicine and under Dr. XX. This would be at XX hospital for four weeks in Brooklyn, New York. I am a third year medical student and I have to get back to my medical school and continue with my third year starting mid-February 2023 and I'll be going for this observership in Jan. That, that was my basic answer. So following this, the next question I get is, when did you last travel to the UK? So to which I had to kind of think I didn't have that prepared like right there. So I was like, I guess it was probably 2022. No, it was 2021. That's how I answered. And then he said, okay, good. That's all he said, but I felt like I should just continue. So I continued on that. I was like, I've traveled to the UK before in 2018. And I've also traveled in Europe. I've traveled to France twice. I've traveled to Martinique twice. I've been to Barbados. I've been in St. Lucia. And I've been to Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand before. So yeah. To which he answers, okay, good. And that's where the talking ends. He is looking at his screen now. I give the answer. He's looking at his screen and for the next one or two minutes, felt like eternity because he's looking at the screen and he's typing and he's reading and he's typing. And in between that, one thing that came up was he looked at something and he was like, Barbados. And I felt that Barbados is where I applied and I got rejected the second time. So I was like, I'm not sure what that is. So I was like, he's asking me a question. I didn't say that, of course, that, that's what I was thinking. Um, but I decided it's better to just be, you know, confident, just stand, just be patient and just wait for him. So he's reading, he's typing, takes one or two minutes. And then he turns, he picks my passport and I'm kind of scared what's going to happen. He goes up, there was a booklet with white paper. So he takes the booklet and he tells this from that booklet and he gives this, slides this with my old passport and DS-160. Takes my passport, keeps it on the side while saying, your visa has been approved, you'll get your visa in about a week from now. I kind of took like two, three seconds to just, you know, kind of absorb that. And then I was like, oh great, thank you so much. I was so happy. So got this. Um, Took my old passport and my file um, and just walked out, uh, drank some water on the way out. Um, and yeah, that was it. I walk out. I didn't have any cell phone on me. So I get an auto rickshaw and that was the quickest thing I could get. And call my mom from the person's, from the driver's phone and, you know, tell and yeah, she tells my friends. I come home, got some sweets, informed my friends who had helped me. I'm like super grateful this all was possible because of Shrishti. She guided me through everything. And then Love guided me and kind of took my interviews. I, I troubled him so much, like Love. So thank you for taking the interviews. Of course, like mom, dad and family, everyone, my family is like, they have helped me through everything, all the other documents. So yeah, thank you. So that was my visa interview. Okay, so now talking about the documents that I took for the interview. Um, let me explain the number of documents that I took for the first interview. It was kind of a pile, like a big pile. Actually, we had like all the documents, properties and like business and everything that possibly could be there. Like a big pile of documents, like in our hands, my family, I was holding the documents. It was like a big pile. We weren't asked for anything. Like we just asked for the trip itinerary, that's all, because it was a tourist visa. The second time I go for the interview, I took even less documents than that, but it was quite a bit of it. I mean, this was like a decent sized pile. And if you can see, these are like the stickies with all the different types of documents I had, like important groups marked in there. So if I was asked of anything, I would like just get it right away and give it to the officer, but I wasn't asked for it. Compare this to this. I mean, this literally has like four or five papers. That's all. I really didn't take a lot of documents this time. And interesting enough, I wasn't asked for any. So all I have to say is what documents I took this time was my DS-160 confirmation, payment confirmation for the visa application. I had my passports. The other documents I had, the most important was my hospital letter. I had that. Then I had a statement of uh, sponsorship from my family. And I had a letter from my university that I'm a current active student there. You should definitely have your bank statement. That's all. That's all I took. I mean, I literally didn't take anything else. Now, the interesting thing for my interview was I was not asked for any documents at all. Like literally no documents, which was like kind of a shocker. All the like research that I did on the internet, every site, every friend I talked to, if they're applying for an observership, like a medical observership, as a medical student or as a doctor, they are always asked for their hospital letter, like the hospital and doctor who's kind of, you know, um, accepted you. So that's something that's always asked, the letter from the hospital. That's like the key thing all the visa officers ask, but 
I was not asked like even a single document. So regarding the documents that you should take, what I would suggest is have the important documents. If you're applying for like a tourist visa, like you're going for tourism, have your itinerary. Have like if you have like pre-flight tickets and pre-itinerary on how you're going to like which places and uh, flights and the hotels that you plan on staying at. That might help. But you really don't have to take all your like you know like tons of property documents like this take these many files because the visa officers they really don't have that much time. On average, they'll have like a minute to three minutes that they can give you, and you have to prove yourself that you are a visa applicant who's gonna abide by the rules and come back. And you have to show your ties to your country. How you do that is you answer yourself. You include and you serve the answers to the visa officer. Like I didn't wait for the visa officer to ask me everything. So the visa officer asked me like, <laughs> "Why are you going to the U.S.?" Some people or how I would have answered like. Two months before, before you know, like learning about the visa interview, I would have been very direct. I would have just said, "I'm going for clinical observership to the U.S." That's how I would have answered. But that's that's not how you answer a visa interview. They want all the clear information, and if you serve them the information, it becomes helpful. So that's why in my answer, if you heard before, I included all the points. I didn't want them to, you know, like question me again on where are you going, when are you going, to which doctor are you going, where are you studying now. I tried to include all the, you know. Key points and serve them in the first answer, so they get a clear picture about who I am, what I'm going for, where I'll be going, with who I'll be doing the internship or the observership, and that it's going to be non-paid. I think I also said non-paid. Uh, I don't remember right now, but yeah, I probably said that. So you just have to serve the answers in a very concise way. It's okay to be more vocal, be clear, but you know, like just extract the highlights of your current situation and serve them and try to present that you'll be a uh, Good applicant who's gonna come back and who's gonna follow the terms and conditions of the visa. That's all. Now, how to dress for the visa? Um, well, this is important. I would really suggest that you dress like formally. Formally is good, but also like not too formal, where you're probably like just dressing up too much and it's like uncomfortable and not what you are used to. I'm kind of okay like formals like these. Like I just wore. I didn't wear a tie. This is this is how I went for the interview. I went I went wearing this exact same. Uh, for the biometrics, and then there was a lighter white. Is this a shirt or t-shirt? Shirt, like very simple, something that I'm used to. You don't have to like buy new clothes or anything. You just have to be yourself, be a little formal. Try to wear formals. I would really suggest that. Don't just go casually, and especially if you're going for like a observership application, visa application. You are like a medical student or a doctor. It's it's very advisable that you wear a little formal or semi semi formals is best. I would say. So yeah, the biggest secret of all. That's the last thing that I want to talk about. The biggest secret of all is to practice, be prepared, and be confident. the 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 secret is being confident. I really feel that the difference from the last two interviews and this third interview was I was absolutely confident. I wasn't like even a bit overconfident, but I was like hundred percent confident. I was like, ask me anything. I'm very clear on why I'm going for, when I'm going for, like everything. I was like very clear on the specifics of my visa application. So if you're like very confident and you answer the questions like real well. In a good tone, the visa officer is like, it sees. It seems that you're like a person who can be kind of trusted upon that they can grant you the visa, and you won't misuse it. So the the secret is being confident and practicing a lot. What really really helped me was being confident, and that confidence comes from having a good practice and knowing that you know everything that might be asked in this interview. So I practiced probably like fifty fifty times or more for this visa interview, probably like twenty times or more with my friend Love and. Probably like fifty to sixty times alone, I guess, just talking to myself before the visa interview days, just talking again and again before bed to myself. This is how I answer. This is what I would say for this question. I I practice everything, and you know it's very important that you really practice for your visa interview because it's it's not something that's like very cheap. It's like one eighty, one eighty five dollars US dollars, and I paid that thrice plus. It that's that's not the only expense. You have to travel. You have to kind of, you know, all the traveling, the living, and everything goes in. So. For me, I've probably like spent more than two thousand US dollars just on the visa with my previous rejections because of everything. So I would suggest get it right the first time, prepare well, and as I said before, I would really love to help you out. I'm going to leave a link in the video description where you can reach out to me. I am planning on having visa prep interviews where I'll have mock interviews for you. I'll check your DS-160 and kind of help you guide through and you know get that US visa done now that I have this much experience and getting rejected twice which is like heartbreaking for me but anyways it's it's something that happened and I learned from it and that's how I kind of you know worked so much on this visa like I tried to look into everything 
so that's that's what i have to say that's just my basic visa story in this video so now the conclusion of this video that's just how my visa process has been and i would love to make more videos on this topic on how to get your visa how to answer your questions what should you answer for what question if you're going for a visa interview visa interview for clinical observership and what more um so leave in the comments below if you have any doubts or any questions that you would like to be addressed in the coming videos and yeah reach out to me if you need any help so thanks for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel like the video it really helps and and if i can help you out in any way feel free to reach out to me through my email so thank you so much for watching the video i'll see you in the next one guys